Talavalava, I'm Monty Beatham, back with another episode of Once a Warrior, joined by an absolute club legend, especially on the wing, uh, Francis Malley, how are you? Uh, good, Monty, it's always good to see a, a fellow warrior. Absolutely, brother. Uh, so what's keeping you busy these days? Uh, not much. Um, just returned from overseas, got into work, um, just um, you know, involved in the community stuff and also um, in the system for um, coaching as well, just, you know, just to help out um, the kids' pathways. Coming through the grades, I hadn't heard a lot about you, but um, I didn't realise you are only a year younger because if I had seen your ability around, I would have known who you were. Uh, where did you come from, man? So, you know, I was always at, at, at Marist. Uh, we had some real famous players there. We had um, David Moo that was there. We had a lot of young players coming through. It was just unfortunate, like, like your grade era was just stacked. You know, all the boys were already in that development system coming through the Super League um, under 19s. And you guys were 18, so you already had another year left. Mm. So it was just, you know, it was just on my part, just hanging in there. Unfortunately, you know, we played Aussies um, under 18 schoolboys, Bernie Perinara. So I want you to come mark this, um, this, this young kid, he signed for the Dragons, he's, he's up and coming, he's destroying everybody in the centres. So yeah, so I, you know, we played at Carlo Park and we actually won, won the game and I scored the, I think on the buzzer mate. And the guy that uh, they had me marking was, um, was Mark Asnia. So after that game then, I had three NRLs clubs trying to, trying to ring me and um, I always wanted to sort of stay home. And, yeah. Funny story is I signed, but I was overseas in, in the islands playing sevens and I forgot all about uh, due date to train and I was about th three weeks behind me. <laughs> yeah, and it's a funny story because um, I remember you turning up that day. It was a, a track session. We are at number two at Mount Smart. Yeah. Uh, and I was going, who is this guy? Uh, and, and what I remember is you and your Chuck Tellers, you had the kid and play haircut, yeah. you had a flat top about that height. Yeah. Uh, and you also had your boxes hanging outside your rugby league shorts, from my memory. Yeah, Bob, you all come around home and was sort of nagging mum. Mum rang me, goes, hey, the guy keeps on coming. He's supposed to start training for the Warriors. And I just went, geez, I totally forgot it. So I jumped on the next plane, come home. And I thought I was just coming just to, you know, do an introduction with the boys and meet the coaching staff. But I was late for training. I didn't know I was training. And then Bobby took me down to the field. I had no training gear. He said, we'll sort that out later. Just, just train what we've got. So I had chucks, and it wasn't it wasn't shorts, man. I was actually wearing boxes, <laughs> boxes. We were doing sprint training on the tracks there. So, I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm sure I was uh, giving Sean Hoppy and a few of the boys run for their money. <laughs> so much to talk about, uh, but only but first let's go back and remind people how good you were as a winger. Nothing you couldn't do with the ball or without the ball, you could play. Francis Malley in full flight. He is unstoppable. The big fella. Francis Melly. Oh, come on, Francis Melly. Oh, oh Francis Melly with a Francis special. Oh, Melly takes a big bust upfield. Oh, look at him go. He's flying. He's still going. He's going to score again. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, a bone cruncher. Lange, you're probably one of the most complete wingers I ever played alongside uh, in the same team. Uh, but what did you love more? Was it attack or defence? Because you could do both so well. Offence was, was, was more my thing. Um, but um, coming through the grades, of, I was always a sort of good defender. And that's probably because, you know, I was probably giving up five, five kgs in there. So I had to sort of have some sort of mongrel in me and some sort of technique. And... And then it was just a matter of time where you got into that sort of professional um, environment where they enhanced your abilities yeah. with uh, weight training. And because I was a centre coming through, and I remember coming to the Warriors and got told by um, Mark Graham that um, that we have uh, like three New Zealand international centres in, in the team. So he said, you need to transition into sort of wing. Two people especially that won't be happy with Mark Graham moving you from centre to the wing, and that is Carmichael Hunt on his debut for the Brisbane Broncos. And the other one is uh, Brent Tate, who we've had on the show, who's been mentioning you as well. Man, you killed them. You killed both men, Brent Tate, multiple times. When you when you look back at it, it's, you know, your your mindset is not to say, like physically hurt, hurt anybody. You know, you want to play the game sort of Are fair. Are you sure? 
<laughs> we don't play the game sort of fair, but it, you know, you had to earn your sort of status in, in wearing that jersey and to come back and play the following week. And, and I need to sort of stamp my sort of mark on, on how, am I, my gonna, how am I gonna live my sort of career as, as a player, as a winger. Um, and, and I wanted to be there all round, but I wanted to sort of make defence of my, my strength. And it, it was more like, you know, if I could do this consistently, um, when they do video, they're going to run the other side, which gives me much more rest, you know. So, <laughs> that was the idea behind very, it. Very smart and very well executed too. So talk to me about how you would line them up and all uh, the key things in your mind when you put on the shots. Because they weren't lucky, mate. You weren't flying off the line. You had probably one of the best defensive reads from a, a winger coming in um, that, that I've seen. Yeah, so it's um, because I had a lot of um, background in playing a uh, touch, rep touch, and a lot of the, the basis on that was defense and communication, was counting numbers, counting numbers. And, and when we used to do edge, I sort of applied that, and you know, I could see it clearly. If you're playing wing, the halves, they only got, they either used the second row short or cut them under, and then it just leaves you with the center and the fullback. And back then, uh, halves were struggling to throw those sort of 15 meter passes. So the options were clear, and I always sort of left the decision on the ball flight and always going to the fullback. Um, and, you know, I enjoyed it, and it was successful for me until Melbourne Storm changed the game. You yeah. know, they, they sort of brought that new sort of stand a bit deeper, stand a bit closer, uh, which made decisions sort of a bit, bit harder. They kicked a bit earlier, so they kept you on your toes. Franny, you were the hit man. You put a lot of shots on other people. Did anyone uh, ever tickle your ribs, man? Uh, funny you say that, so when, when you sort of start putting shots on and reading it, it's, you, you know, you've got to sort of self-counsel that, so I kind of knew. Um, it was always like saying a bit deeper or footwork and, you know, one of my key strengths back then was sort of footwork and agility. Um, you know, remember a phone, no look passes and all that. Mm. So I was always aware. And, <laughs> and the only time that I was sort of concerned is when Clinton Torpy was throwing those hospital passes. You know, sometimes you take the bullet, but uh, I, I don't recall being winded or getting sort of, better be careful now, because someone might post something on social media yeah. and be getting... Um, <laughs> please do, if you're out there and you've got the evidence, please. No, nah, but I don't, yeah, I, oh, I don't recall. We were both very lucky to come to grade. I came to grade that year with you to have Mark Graham. Your memories of MG and what did you like about him? Um, memories. <laughs> <laughs> Memories, I was walking into the bloody training rooms and people were lying, lying down Nigel, lying down stressed out. He goes, well, what's going on? He goes, oh, we've got fitness. Um, but tough, you know, MG was tough. Um, and I think um, if it wasn't for his part in, in his role in my, in my career early on, just that mental toughness of training, um, getting through it. Remember, we used to go to those secondary schools and get flogged in front of all the kids. Man, I think everybody went to, to join a different sport after seeing that. And he always hated the backs. Remember, we used to play that backyard footy where it was only two metres and, and it was forwards against backs. Tuesdays were team name Tuesdays as well. You know you'd run away from Mark because you don't want to talk to him because if he spoke to you before and you wouldn't be in the team. But do you remember when you were given your debut? So I remember the game and you know what, man? I played that game like it was just a blur. You know, I was just overwhelmed, just the fact that I got the chance to put on the jersey and you're playing in front of um, you know, thousands of people at home. Um, I think we just lost, you know, enjoyed it. But uh, what, what it gave me is um, uh, uh, insight where, like, if you really want to stay here and be a part of this sort of career, yeah. man, I had a lot to sort of learn and sort of, and uh, a few things to change. You think about your first two years, only played five games across mm. two years, uh, and then obviously transitioned to wing, 2001. I mean, man, uh, what a stellar year you had. 25 games, 11 tries. Mm. Like, you showed everyone what you were about. Uh, what was the difference between the two years in the transition from Tai Nui to Eric Watson? Yeah. I, I did have a few words with um, Mark Graham because I went and asked him about, you know, what's, what do I need to do to sort of start earning? He said, you know, it's your time. Um, it's, it's not right now. It's near. So he gave me sort of the, the sniff. And it's OK, you know, I could live with that. It's just, it just pricked me up individually knowing that when that time comes, you know, it's going to be my time and I'm going to hold on to it. And then when that new sort of takeover with um, Mick Watson and, and Eric and Daniel, and man, I was ready. Um, obviously, they didn't know too much about me playing uh, NRL because I, I was behind the scenes. So I, I didn't really have much to negotiate um, price-wise. So, you know, I took the bullet, but I knew I was ready. And by the end of that year, you know, we were negotiating with 
probably after six months. Was it a different breed of young men? Because I tell you what, in terms of competing and always trying to embarrass each other in a, in a nice, friendly way in terms of uh, beating them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, beating them in the sandpit, uh, getting Ando all excited. I yeah. mean, that's, that seemed to be what happened day in, day out. I think that was Daniel's highlight, mate. He just loved that competition and he knew it too. And, you know, Kempi loved it as well. You know, Kempi always had that smirk, mm -hmm. that little giggle, and he loved it. Um, and a lot of us in the same age group, and we knew, because, you know, Daniel made it quite clear, mm -hmm. when he named the list, you could be playing one week and resting two weeks, playing three weeks or resting five weeks. So everybody was clear, so we had to earn it. It was all competition, and, and, and all part of that sort of built us up to be better players. Um, and learn from each other and, and mainly support each other off the field because, you know, it's not nice sort of sitting sitting on the bench or not playing for two weeks. Yeah. So it was important that, we, you know, we all play that role in sort of holding each other's morale up. Hey, you know, you just got to work harder. We, individually, we all had our gifts as a team. Um, it was special. You know, that, that's something that, that spirit that no one can sort of take away from mm -hmm. that, 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 that squad. Um, and, and that's probably the key, the key factor there is we, you know, we were unique as a team. We had something that um, we know what it is. It's just hard to sort of, there's no formula to sort of put it together again. Well, that left edge that you were on the end of many times through 2002, 2003, mm. even 2001, very special. Stacey Jones, um, Ali Lautiti, uh, sometimes Shoni in there for him, Clinton Torpe and yourself. Uh, when you're on the end of it all, seeing it all unfold and seeing how you would just dismantle teams, what was it like? It, it got to a point where it was normal and this is how competing in, in a real good environment team that sort of wanting to win, that's how it should feel. You know, there's no doubt when you're putting the jersey on, you've done the homework during the week, you've done the tip sheet, you're looking at your individual players, you're looking at your own individual skills and Stace always used to talk about, talk to Ali, do your role. You know, isolate the half and the second row, which will sort of leave numbers for me and Torpy. Are you sure Stace was the leader? Because all I heard was Torpy calling hot, 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 one in the ball every time. How do you decide what you're going to throw down that left edge and how do you keep someone like Clinton uh, uh, under control? Uh, you know what, well, me and Clinton, we've got so many stories, mate, because we hold each other accountable. And I remember one game we had kick chase and, and I was knackered and I missed, and I missed uh, the kick chase and I was about 10 metres behind. He looks around, because normally when we kick chase, we're jamming, me and him mm. are taking the first two tackles up just to keep the heat on. I was in there, he looked around, <laughs> and he just looked at me. And we just have this connection, he looked at me, he goes, if you can't handle it, get off the field and sit on the bench. <laughs> and then following set, we come down and say, hold the ball, hold the ball. He used to love to offload, hold the ball, hold the ball. He tries to offload it and he knocks it on and he looks at me, and we just crack up laughing on the field <laughs> like it's... <laughs> But, you know, those are those moments. You can't control um, Torpy because he just lives off the, the mm. you know, whatever's there he plays. And I think Stacey sort of adapted around that. And, you know, and Stacey was never the one to sort of yell. He just says gentle voice. He goes, mm. come on, Toops, hey, that's three errors now. Hold the ball. And then Toops, oh, yeah. So Toops had trigger, trigger sort of sayings from Stacey. Uh, but other than that, it was just enjoyable. And he, adding Shawnee there, uh, Shawnee brought a different dynamic to the game. I don't know if it was a swerve or power, but it just seemed mm. to sort of like run through the lines. Um, sometimes you talk to Shawnee, he goes, yeah, say, say, no, Joy, like wink at me and skip him, you know, we say, <laughs> or kick, you know, kick for me. And he tubes, he should just turn around and blow up Shawnee, you know, like, get his numbers on, it's hot, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So. We just had Justin Murphy on and he says he hasn't been to a club where he hasn't been the fastest. Now, I know he overlaps with yourself and Henry Fartfeely and Brent Webb. So if we're talking about speed, Francis Malley, who was the fastest? I think over 40, 45 was me and that's all I needed. <laughs> that's all I needed. I didn't need to score those long, long range tries. Anything from inside the half, you know, I had it in the bag. Um, Murph, Murph was quick. Um, in terms of speed endurance, it would be Clinton Torpy. Yeah. You know, he could do it like sprint one, sprint again, sprint again. Where Murphs will probably sprint one, score, try and spew up in the corner, <laughs> you know. And forgot, you... <laughs> I forgot to have that conversation with Murph because every time there was a beep test, uh, he would get the bin out yeah. because he'd, he'd spew up. He didn't have the biggest engine, yeah. but he ran 100 metre tries a couple of times and then he spews. Yeah. He just always spews, right? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what it was, but, you know, that was, yeah, that was Murph. I remember like him and Stace, I think one game after a hot day of a... I think we played, we played the Tigers 
and they used to run in the just when the half time in the change room, the first one in the change room, they're spewing up in you know in the in the toilets. And it made it made us look bad sometimes because then Daniel used to look, these guys are busting their ass off. What are you guys doing? So I was like, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's go to the grand final. Um, because that kick from Stacey Jones in that first half, I mean, if it bounces your way, you know the kick I'm talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. You score. Because you were winning that race. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, was, uh, I think uh, Luke, Luke Phillips was playing fullback back then and we, we did have a call because we did it, if, if you recall, we did it at the Sharks um, a couple of times and and Stacy saw it, so he put it through and I was gunning it down there and and when I was running, I see Phillips and, you know, you know when you can tell somebody's face is like, you know, he... Losing. He was, yeah, he was in, you know, he knew this is a... He was going to lose that race and it was just, you know, luck of the bounce, it bounced towards his way which which actually took me another three metres to change my angle to run. And, you know, and he was coming towards it and he dived. And, you know, we scored that. It will be a massive momentum mm -hmm. because, you know, games, those big games are built on momentum. And moments. And there was another moment soon after. And you want to have a word to Justin Murphy about that too. Yeah. Um, it's, Picking on Murphs today, brother. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It's, oh, well, I'll probably have to blame this one on Ando because, you know, sometimes <laughs> when after games we have a beer and we talk about these sort of stuff, you know, moments and he, he speaks about that kick chase that I sort of missed and then the other key moments was the 40-20 when, um, when Fitler kicked and, and I said, why is that? And he said, uh, because he said the message went out to, to Murphs, yeah. watch out for the 40-20 and fair enough, Freddie kicks it and Murphs missed it. And, you know, and they set up and they score that try. And like mm. you said, you know, momentum in certain parts of the games, it's, it's crucial because it was a physical game. 2003, you've had some stellar years with the club, but mm. it doesn't get any better than that. 23 tries in 27 games. Um, what was it about that year for you individually first that made it such a good year? And then also the players in and around you, who was good in your team? Yeah, I mean, that season was all team effort. Um, on my part individually, man, I was quite lucky because I'd come back from the Kiwis 2002 tour and we came in and, oh man, I was like seven kgs overweight, mm. you know, and Ando sort of, you know, he, he sort of spit the dummy, all right? So instead of sort of getting the boys in and just hammering conditioning, we took it real slow, we built a base. And man, I remember starting that, that season four kgs overweight, but as I got along during the year, mm. you know, I became fitter. So I was more fresh going on from the back end of the year. So individually, that sort of um, gave me a boost and, you know, and helped towards the team. Um, I don't think there's ever going to be a level um, better than what you have done in, in a semi-final against the Bulldogs. Five tries. Talk to me about that night, your thoughts going into that match. Uh, it was just enjoyment, Monty, you know, it was just enjoyment. It was just, just, just the morale and trying to create things um, naturally. Um, and, you know, and that's what happened. I was just at the end of it, you know, and when I did get the chance, you know, I had to, you know, Execute. So. Don't you go being humble now, mate. You yeah. are the one line king. You're not normally humble when the cameras are. I know. Oh. I did an interview because I got man of the match, and I think I got a thousand dollars or something. And the interviews were were rolling, and they asked me the same question. And I think uh, I think Vinny Anderson knows about this. And uh, you know, I was just talking smack, and I was saying, oh, a lot of work goes into it. You know, there's a core stability that goes into it. The way I was swearing, the way I was stepping, <laughs> and we still have a laugh now and again. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's um. It's just all bit of do, do you remember the five tries? Do you still remember what they were in your head? Or yeah. Do you, or do you, yeah. Yeah. Because the first one, it should have been six. The first one, I dropped when Stacey threw a face ball and I dropped it. So, you know, after that, that's when my sort of antennas went up. And, you know, man, this is a semi, yeah. you know, these are finals here. Yeah? Just start cracking. So <laughs> I think that was probably the key there, much, you know. And Stacey, drop one, score yeah, five. Yeah, drop one, score five. Or drop one and get the stare from Stacey and score five. So. Yeah. And which ones were your favourite ones, man? I don't know, I hate to say it, but it was probably be against our fellow mate, um, ex-warrior, Nigel Mangana. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I stepped off and I looked down, he was around my shoelace. So. <laughs> you know, unfortunately he was marking me that day and um, oh, it's just the way it was. Yeah. Falangi, we were one game off the uh, grand final losing to the eventual winners. So many good performers through that year, but you get player of the year. What does that mean to you? to go down to Penrith and to see them go, go through, you know, that probably hurt more than sort of losing the grand final in 2002. 
Um, and you know, and it was brutal. You know what? I've still got the, that that trophy in the cabinet. One, and when I look at it, it is it is an achievement, and I do feel proud about it. It was probably more emotional for parents. You know, they've always been there for the journey, and for me to sort of collect their award, see them sort of um, um, happy and sort of acknowledge that I've come a long way. You know, it's, it makes me proud. Falangi, just going through the stats, one kick at goal. Tell me, tell me about that. Yeah, it was it was against the Broncos. There's a story behind that, and um, I think we were down on kickers, um, and Ando was looking for kickers, and I said I used to kick back in the grades um, when I was playing at Maris, and I said I used to average 200 points a season, and you know I kept on repeating it during the game. He didn't give me the duties. We scored the try, and then the message runs out, you know, comes out, and goes, oh, Ando wants you to take it. <laughs> oh. so anyway, man, it wasn't even from the sideline. I think it was about. 10 metres from just the side of the post and you know and it was just man I choked I missed and then that was it I think Andrew said put your 200 points somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> your legacy didn't just happen on the field in terms of what you did for the club on, in the jumper your legacy was off the field too now an absolute legend of the club one of the goats uh, Simon Mannering he yeah. came up here 2005 our last year and I don't know how this got put past um, um, the people in charge, but he was a roomie of yours. You took him under your wing, mate. Yeah, so funny. Can you take credit for that? Funny story is a true story. So, you know, I was just, because back then I was a bit of a bachelor and, and, and Ando rings me. He goes, hey, mate, um, we've got this young fella coming up through development. He's got real potential and we just need somebody to take, underneath his, take him underneath his wing. So are you able to do it? And I went, oh, you know, and I was like going, yeah, sure. So I took him down and he had this was sort of like the surfer or hippie with long hair. Probably needed to feed him at the, you know at that stage. Yep. Talk, took him home and then showed him his room. Only curtains, no drawers, no nothing, and there was a mattress in the corner. He said, "Oh yeah, that, that's that's your bed there," and that mattress is man, it's, it's a killer. He'll tell you. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you only one one blanket as well. He was shaking at one time. Uh, when Ando said they've got this up and coming kid that he's gonna you know he's got real good potential. Oh, I couldn't see it, you know. I was going, oh, we signing a water polo player now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope Simon's uh, watching this. Uh, but, you know, it's sort of like when you get to know him going to training and that and his work ethic in the gym and training, Invest. man, he gave it everything. I played my little part in, sure. in his journey. And to me, to come back and get his uh, wife to sort of um, bring me in and hand over his 250 jersey here up, up at the club, Man, it was an honour. Uh, just finally for you, I mean, you had a wonderful career overseas with St Helens especially, mm. one of the absolute legends up there in the Super League. Uh, but what did it mean to be a Warrior? Being a part of the club and, and, and the journey, you know, the up and down, so we went through. Even so, we didn't win a title and we come so close. Um, you know, being a part of the, the organisation and, you know, wearing the badge and sort of bringing a lot of Kiwis back um, in love with the game. Like it's, it's it's special. It's something that uh, uh, it's, oh, it stays with you. Francis, once a warrior, always a warrior. You're one of the absolute best uh, to ever wear that jumper. Thank you for your service, man. Thanks, Monts. We'll hopefully see you in the next game. I'm on to be them. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again next week for another episode of Once a Warrior. Francis Malley in full flight. He is unstoppable. The big fella. Now it's Millie. This is a barnstorming run. It's Francis Melly. Come then, Francis Melly. Oh! Yeah, Francis Melly with a Francis special. Oh! Melly takes a big bust up field. Oh, look at him go! He's flying!